EVGA's RTX 2080 Ti Kingpin card was literally purpose-built for our competition with Jay's Two Cents. There was actually no other reason to make it other than to escalate the overclocking conflict with Jay, but the card will become publicly available at some point in the future as well because we are we are very generous like that. EVGA also had the Z390 Dark available at their suite for at least early photography and video, and they had some 2060s. We'll be talking about all of those today from EVGA Suite at CES 2019. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermaltake's Core P3 case. The Core P3 is one of the most unique cases on the market. It can serve as an open air standing chassis, a test bench in vertical or horizontal orientation, or as a wall mounted showcase PC. The Core P3 now comes with a five millimeter thick tempered glass panel for its side, but keeps the front, top and back open for air. The Core P3's versatility as a display piece, test bench, or standard desktop is reinforced by its price of roughly $110 on Amazon. You can learn more at the link in the description below. Getting straight into the electrical details of the Kingpin card. First of all, the Kingpin cards, if you don't know, they are high-end overclocking cards, typically associated with extreme overclocking. You can use them out of box, but that's not really how they're meant to be used. The 2080 Ti Kingpin PCB is a 12 layer design that uses a digital MPS2888A controller with 16 MP8695660 amp power stages with memory VRMs using three of the same 60 amp power stages for extra overkill. FBVDD power is a single phase digital control VRM. The card also has three eight pin power connectors accompanied by a 520 watt maximum TDP rating in the overclocking VBIOS. This is one of the most important aspects because it lifts the biggest restriction in Touring, which is the power limit. Technically, it should be possible for users to override the voltage provision to the card past what NVIDIA allows, but that might require some softer mods, but nothing too crazy on this card. Touring is most limited by power and voltage, and the Kingpin card gives you the tools to try and overcome those limits. For the basics, the Kingpin 2080 Ti uses an Ace Attack 120mm CLC for the GPU core, moved up to the Gen 6 pump from Gen 4.5 previously. Technically, Gen 4.5 has a natively higher pump speed, but Gen 6 switches to a metal impeller from the plastic one before it, which we showed in the teardown previously. The differences don't really matter that much from a performance standpoint. The Gen 4.5 and Gen 5 pumps are often better or within margin of error, but the Gen 6 pump does reduce permeation and should therefore reduce pump whine and age, which is with age, which is something that you all have complained about with the other EVGA hybrid cards. We'll see how it does, but Gen 6 should theoretically reduce whine, but we'll see. The card also has pinouts for EVBOT and I2C connectors, or ProBits connectors, so anyone with an external voltage controller could hook into the Kingpin card from uh, what was explained to us and attempt to override NVIDIA voltage limits. A four pin fan header is also present on this part of the board near the ProBit header, which you can use for DMM measurements if you want a, uh, a direct read of what the card is dealing with for voltages. Price is TBD. As for the Z390 Dark motherboard, following the X299 Dark's leadership presence and overclocking, the Z390 Dark changes socket orientation completely with a 90 degrees counterclockwise rotation. The socket rotates to the side, positioning the VRM toward the I.O. area and moving the memory sockets up toward the usual residency for EPS 12 volt cables. This will undoubtedly cause clearance issues with CLCs in many cases. So keep that in mind. Unfortunately, the only real solution here is to plan around that limitation. There are only two DIMM slots on this board, which will improve memory overclocking capabilities, but limit capacity. This isn't something you want for your daily driver build. Uh, this is an overclocking motherboard. The result is a movement of the EPS 12 volt header to be adjacent to the 24 pin header, cleaning up cabling without introducing as many of the electrical wiring difficulties that would be faced if the socket were in a normal orientation. The board runs a 12 phase V core with 60 amp power stages, the ISL 99227s, with the voltage controller in the form of the ISL 69138. VSA power is a single ISL 99140 40 amp power stage, and VCCIO is a single phase of the same power stage and the CPU graphics VRM uses a 69133 controller and two ISL 9922760 amp power stages. Memory is a single 9922760 amp power stage, and don't worry, we'll have a build droid analysis of all of this in the future. Max CPU power rating for the board is about 800 watts on the Z390 Dark, and finally, EVJ also had its RTX 2060 cards present. The cards were the XC, SC, and XC Ultra, with the XC Ultra in a 6 plus 2 phase design, and the XC and SC at 4 plus 2 phase designs, with even the smallest of cards still using a 2.8 slot design. We might talk about these more later, 
but that'll wrap up EVGA Suite for now. The biggest news items here would be the Kingpin card and the Z390 Dark. We hope to get both, so check back for our reviews or work with those devices. You can subscribe for more. Go to store.gamersnexus.net to help us out directly. Thank you for watching. We'll see you all next time.